Well, welcome to Shady Grove Wesleyan Church Online. I'm Stephanie DeMora, the weekday preschool director here at Shady Grove, and I am your host today. If you are new and you're watching us for the first time, please just go to our website at www.shadygrove.net slash connect and go ahead and fill that out so we can make a connection with you. Maybe one of our pastors can contact you and see how we can serve you. If you're watching on Facebook, we would love it if you would like and like our page and this video and then share it um, with your friends so they can also hear what God is doing and how he's speaking. If you are watching on YouTube, we'd love for you to subscribe so you can see updates to other videos that we're doing um, as things pop up, new messages and other things that are posted um, and like this video. Most importantly, we'd love for any of these to be shared on your different social media or with your friends. And uh, we would love to see you again as each video is posted. Now sit back and we will worship and hear a great message. I'd like to welcome everybody to our service today. Hope you're ready to raise a hallelujah with us. God is good, amen. Raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My a melody I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you gotta hear my praises roar
Hey guys, thank you so much for worshiping with us this week. Hey, I've titled today, uh, the message today, something very specific and something I want you to think about right out of the gate, right? If this was a horse race, right out of the gate, I want this thing to hit your mind in today's message. What if right past your fear, right past your fear is your promised land? Let me say that again. What if right past your fear is your promised land? And here's what I mean by that, right? You know the Old Testament stories when God promised Israel the promised land. It was a beautiful, beautiful country and God wanted to take his people there. What if your promised land, this beautiful country, this beautiful place of restoration and healing and peace and safety is right past your greatest fear? So think about this for a minute. What, what is the one thing in your life that you have been putting off? Like literally the one thing that you've procrastinated and you say, I'll do that tomorrow, but tomorrow never happens. Like what, what is that text that you know that you need to send? What is that phone call that you know that you need to make? What is that letter that you know you need to write? What is that conversation you know that you need to have? What is that apology that you know you need to make? What, 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 what is that, that place that you know you need to go? What is that, what is that conversation even with your boss that, that you know that you have to take, that, that, that you've been putting off, that you know that you have to make, that you've been putting off, that you've been saying, you know what, I'm not gonna do that right now. Like the one thing in your life that could, that could literally lead you into your promised land, lead you into to more happiness, to more joy, to more resolution, the one thing in your life that you've put off. I can tell you specifically why you haven't done that thing yet. The one thing that you've been putting off in your life. You probably haven't done that one thing that you know in your heart that you have to do. You gotta send that text, write that letter, make that visit, have that conversation, go to that place, make that transition in your life. I would be willing to bet you have not made that decision to do that yet because of fear. Because of fear. Because you're scared of the outcome. You're scared of the response. You're scared of what they might say when you have this conversation. You're scared of, you're scared of swallowing your pride and, 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 and doing this. The scaredest that I have ever been in my life was when my wife and I drove to Iowa a few years back, or longer than that, probably 10 plus years back. We drove to Iowa, and let me just tell you, like Iowa is exactly like you think Iowa is. It was cornfields everywhere. And so we're going to meet this person, my wife and I were, and we're following our navigation system. And, and, and we're following the navigation system. It takes us, we cross the state line, we get into Iowa, and then we notice the navigation system takes us off road. And the navigation system takes us off road. And before we know it, we're not only on a, a single lane road, we're on a single lane gravel road as we're going to this place. And then we notice the sun starts to set a little bit. And then we notice we're in the middle of the woods. And it's just Jennifer and I, and I become scared because I'm just following my navigation system. I'm trying to get us to the destination that we're supposed to go. And so then I notice that we're on, we're on gravel roads. Then I notice the lanes start to get closer and closer together. And so I'm on this little bitty one lane gravel road in the middle of the woods and it's dark outside. And then I start thinking to myself, wait a minute, I, I bet Sasquatch is out here in these woods. I bet, I bet there's mountain lions out here in these woods. I bet there's bad bobcats out here. If something goes wrong and we're out here, we're done. And I'm driving and I turn my brights on, right? I literally turn my brights on and I notice right in front of me. And as soon as I saw it, I slammed on the brake. I noticed this canyon right in front of us. Like this road literally drove into a canyon, like the Grand Canyon in my eyes, in my mind, right? And I thought to myself in this moment, I said, I'm done. And I told Jennifer, like, we're not following the navigation anymore. I slammed on my brakes, I put the car in reverse, and I got out of there as quick as I could. The truth is, there probably wasn't a canyon in front of me. The, the, the truth is, I was probably just, just scared in that moment, and that's what I saw. But, but, but I wonder, like, what, what was past that? Would it have taken me to my destination? Because typically what happens when, when fear hits our lives, when we get scared and we know what God's calling us to do something, we know God's calling us to go to this place or have that conversation or to make amends with this person or, 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 to, or to, to have this conversation. What we do is we get scared at the last moment and we hit our brakes and we put the car in reverse and we get out of there. That's, that's what we do. And I can't help but wonder 
you as a follower of Jesus Christ, like if the fear that you have didn't stop you from having that conversation, from having that meeting, from sending that text, from making that phone call, from, from going to that place, I cannot help but wonder what is right past your fear. And I believe right past your fear is the promised land. Like right past that place. Why do you think the fear is so strong? Because the enemy knows like, man, if you overcome this fear, you could enter into your own promised land. I, I think it's time, I believe this, it's, it's time for Christians to, to stop living in fear. Like I, I was thinking even this week, like I, I wonder what the world well, what would look like if Christians quit, lived, quit living in fear. I can't help but wonder like, what would your life look like? I mean, think back on your past. What would your life look like? Where, where would you be right now if fear hadn't dictated your life? Where would you be in your life? You, you might be in your own, your own promised land. One of the wildest stories of the Bible is about a guy named, about a guy named Moses. And Moses, man, let me tell you about Moses. Moses was this great leader. He was loyal. He was committed to his people. He was dedicated. He loved God. Now, now he wasn't perfect, uh, but he was wise in a lot of ways. He learned from his mistakes. And in fact, the Bible tells us this at Moses' funeral. It basically says this, that there's never been somebody born like Moses and there never ever will be again. I mean, Moses had a great reputation. And God calls Moses, this is what God tells Moses. He says, Moses, I'm calling you to lead my people who have been in slavery in Egypt for around 500 years. I'm calling you to lead them to the promised land. The promised land. And Moses is probably thinking, well, what's the promised land? The promised land, the Bible tells us, is this land flowing with milk and honey. It's a beautiful land that God wanted to give his people and he wanted Moses to lead them there. And then uh, the truth is that the promised land is really more than just land. It's, it's a place of, of safety. It's a place of security. It's a place of peace. It's the place that God wanted to take his people. It's not just good land. It's a place that God wanted to take his people so he could protect them and take care of them well. Well, the truth is, is that Moses led Israel out of slavery, but Moses never entered the promised land. Mo Mo Moses, the truth is, Moses saw the promised land. Like God let Moses get a glimpse of the promised land, but Moses never entered the promised land. Through some mistakes that he made and, and, and his people made, they, they, they never entered the promised land during their lifetime. But, but have you ever, like, I, I thought about this, like, have you ever, like your promised land, whatever that is, like your promised land that God wants to take you. Like, have you ever thought to yourself, man, what if, what if I really did get that promotion and you see it from a distance? What if I've really, 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 really reconciled with this person and I see it with a distance? Or maybe it's a relationship with your kids. Like that's the promise thing. Like I can see it from a distance, a better relationship with my kids. And the truth is fear has stopped you and you've seen it from a distance. Moses saw the promised land from a distance. He never entered it. Moses died. And, and, then, and then out shoots Joshua. Joshua was Moses' number two person in the Bible. And, and God says, Joshua, you are now gonna lead my people. And Joshua, you're gonna lead the people into the promised land, into the land that I'm gonna give them. Don't be scared, Joshua, do this. And you know Joshua's response is when, when, when God raises up Joshua to take over from Moses, he's probably thinking, I'm not Moses. Like, I can't do this. And Joshua probably said, listen, I'm a number two. I'm not a number one. Like, I can't lead these people. They love Moses. They're not gonna love me. And I love what God told Joshua. And this is where everything that I've been talking about really comes together. This is what God tells Joshua. In Joshua 1, verses six through nine, he says this, he says, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them the promised land. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous in, and successful. Have I not commanded you? And he's talking to Joshua. Be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is what God is telling Joshua right here. 
He's saying, Joshua, I, I wanna give you and your people this land. And it's, and it's great land. It's beautiful and I'm gonna be with you and it's gonna be awesome and wonderful. But for me to give you this land, Joshua, you've got to overcome your fears. You've got to overcome your doubts. You've got to overcome your, 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 your insecurities. You've got to overcome your fear, Joshua, if I'm gonna give you this land. He's, so he's, he just preaches to Joshua, like God preaches to his son, to his servant, Joshua, and he says, be strong and be courageous. I wanna give you this promised land, but for me to give you this, like you've gotta overcome your fear. But Joshua, right past your fear, right past this moment of fear is your promised land. And so I was thinking this week, like, what is your promised land? Maybe, maybe your promised land is a better marriage that God wants to give you. Say, man, I, I, wanna, I, I promise you I want to give you a better marriage. Maybe your promised land is a better relationship with your kids. And, 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 and your fear is just stopping you from moving forward. Maybe your promised land is a promotion at work or a transition that you need to make or a new place that you need to go and advance the gospel. Or maybe your promised land is a is reconciliation from a friendship that's been strained for so many years. And God says this to us, even today in the scripture, I believe this. He's saying, listen, don't let fear stop you from moving into your promised land. Don't, don't let fear, don't let fear hold you back from moving into your promised land. Like I, I promise you, I want to give you this land and it's a place of, of peace and safety and security. But in order for you to have this, you've got to get, you got, you got to get over your fear. You got to get over that fear of rejection. You got to get over that fear of what they might say. You got to get over that fear of criticism. You got to get over that fear of saying it, it, it never might happen. The truth is, 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 is like we have to overcome our fear if we're to enter the promised land. And that's what, Josh, that's what God is telling Joshua. He's saying, you want to enter the promised land? Joshua, you've got to be strong and, and you've got to be courageous. You know, there's so many promises in the Bible. And I love the promises of the Bible. Promises like promises of salvation. I Man, I, I love the promises of salvation. Promises of forgiveness. I really like that one because I've messed up a lot and I mess up a lot. Promise of the Holy Spirit that God's going to send us to dwell in us. I, I really like that one a lot. Those, those are promises that are found in the scriptures. But, but what are some promises that maybe God has spoken over your life? Because the promised land literally means what it sounds like. Moses, I promise you, I'm going to give you this land to your people. What are some promises that God has spoken over your life? Hey, listen, I promise you, I want to give you a better marriage. I want to give you a better relationship with your kids. I want to give you a better job. I want to give you better finances. I want to give you better health. I want to give you reconciliation in this friendship that's been strained for so long. I want to give, I want to give you the promised land. But, but in order to do that, like in order, in order to make that happen, you, you, you've got to overcome your fear. You've got to live courageously. So what's that one thing that God is calling you to do that you've put off because of fear? Because right past that fear maybe is the promised land that, that God wants to give you. You know, I, I love action movies. I really do. I love watching Terminator and The Patriot and Braveheart and Die Hard. I love action movies. I love watching uh, uh, car chases and, and battles in the field. Like I, I, love, I love watching these things and, and, and I, I love these things like with, with, I really do. And the truth is, is I love watching them because I like to live courageously through the lives of others. And the truth is like, I think God is calling us saying, listen, quit living courageously through the lives of others and, and you start living courageously yourself. You see, it's time for the people of God to start stepping where, where there's not solid ground like Peter did when he got out of the boat and trusting God that he's got this, that God calls us to walk on water, we're gonna walk on water to start reaching for things that, that, that they don't even look like there's anything to hold on to, but I'm gonna reach for it and I know that God has got this. It's time for the followers of Jesus Christ to, to quit living in fear and start living courageously ourselves. There, there was a lady in the New Testament that was bleeding for 12 years. 12 years she was bleeding, we had this condition. She spent all of her money. She, she went to every doctor in the land and couldn't stop her bleeding. One day she gets news that Jesus was coming to town. 
And for this lady, her promised land was healing from the bleeding. Can you you imagine this? 12 years of bleeding, right? 12 years of bleeding. And and Jesus is coming to town. Her promised land was Jesus healing her. But, But she was scared. The Bible tells us this. She was scared. She was scared that people would say, what are you doing talking to Jesus? You tried everything else, and now you're going to come to Jesus? Her promised land was healing, but this one lady was terrified. And there was a big crowd. She worried about what the crowd might say if she went to Jesus for healing. She worried about their criticism. She worried about their response. And so she, she just takes that, that first step. And she literally just steps in that direction. And she takes that second step. And that third step. And she goes up behind Jesus. And she just touches his clothes. And instantly she was healed. I I love that story. Now, some people would call this lady a coward. I I call that lady super courageous. 12 years of fighting this, and she just walked up behind Jesus and just touched his clothes, and Jesus had so much power in him that he, he, he just healed her instantly. And you know the rest of the story if you know your Bible. One of my favorite movies is, is We Bought a Zoo with Matt Damon. And I love that line that Matt Damon tells his son in the movie We Bought a Zoo. His son is trying to ask out this girl. And I've shared this with you before. But it's one of my favorite movie lines of all time. His son's trying to ask out this girl. And Matt Damon's trying to encourage his son. And this is what he says. He says, he says all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage. If you can have 20 seconds of insane courage, great things are going to happen. And this lady... 20 seconds of insane courage, walked up behind Jesus and was healed and entered her promised land. This lady, 20 seconds of insane courage and she entered her promised land. What's that one thing that you've been putting off? That one text message you need to type, that one phone call you need to make, that one letter that you need to write, that one conversation, because God wants to take you into the promised land. And he tells us the same thing that he told Joshua. Joshua, just be strong, be courageous. Like, I'm with you. I'm not gonna abandon you. Just trust me, Joshua, because right behind your fear, right behind your fear is the promised land, is your promised land. And each of us have our own, I believe this, each of us have our own individual promised land. But, but I don't wanna lie to you about fear. I want to be completely honest with you about fear today because fear, is, fear, fear is, a, is a tough topic to talk about because it's easy to say do not fear when, when we all fear, right? When difficult times come, we, we fear and we get scared. So let me give you some facts about fear today. The first fact of fear is this. Fear is a tactic that the enemy uses to stop us from moving forward. Fear is a tactic that the enemy uses to stop us from moving forward. Listen, why do you think you've been so scared of this situation? Why do you think you've been so scared of having that conversation, of saying that you're sorry, of going to that place or making that transition? Because the enemy knows this. Like his last defenses are up. He's using everything that he can to to, to pump your mind, to pump your heart, to pump your life for fear. Because he knows right past that fear is the promised land. The The enemy uses fear. He uses fear to stop us from moving forward. He uses fear to to prevent us from moving into the promised land. It's a tactic. My my son just turned 16 last week, my oldest son, and we had this big water balloon fight. And I had a bunch of youth kids on my team in this water balloon fight. And I got my team together, and I guess I was team captain, right? And and the thing about it is, is I told my team, this is what I said. I said, okay, you two are going to be defenders. You're going to be back here. You three are going to be on the attack. And you, you're going to go this direction. So I had like this strategy. In the first game, we won. And then after the birthday party ended, my oldest son, Toby, told me, he said, dad, um, some people on your team were concerned that you were a little bit too competitive. And I said, buddy, I said, that doesn't bother me too much. I am competitive. I don't play games in order to have fun. I play games to win. That's why like, I got out of boxing and I quit like, recreational sports because I, I, I hate to lose with, with all my heart. I, I use this strategy with my water balloon team to win the game. And, and the thing about it is, this is what the enemy does. He, he hates losing. He doesn't want you to move forward. He doesn't want you to reconcile in that relationship that's strained. He doesn't want you to write that letter, send that text, have that conversation, move to this place, transition over here. He doesn't want you to do that because he knows right past that. There's a season of joy. And there's a season of, of peace. His, his tactic that he uses is fear to stop you. And the truth is, most of what he gets you to be scared about is not even true anyway. Uh, another, another fact about fear is this. Fear is crippling your life. Fear is crippling your life. I think about, I think about 
Like where my life would be if I haven't operated in fear for so long? Where would your life be if, if, if fear hasn't crippled you, hadn't crippled you for so long? Moses was the first leader of Israel. They were in the wilderness 40 years, which should have taken a 40 day journey. And I can't help but wonder, man, they should have entered the promised land in 40 days, not 40 years. You, you've let fear cripple you for so long. I've let fear cripple me for so long. Having that conversation, writing that letter, going to that place, having, that, go, go, having, having this uh, conversation with this person, whatever it is. And I can't help but, man, have I wasted so many years in my life? Because it's crippled me. It's, it's stopped me in my tracks. Fear has. And I want to challenge you, brothers and sisters, to not let fear cripple you anymore. It's, it's, it stopped you from moving forward. But right past that fear is the promised land that God wants to give you. And the last thing about fear that I want to tell you uh, right now, the last fact about fear is this. Fear is real. I, I want to discredit fear. F f fear hurts, right? Fear, fear, f fear is a very real emotion. And like the, the emotion of fear is very real. It's not some false thing. It's like real. Like we get scared about, okay, Kevin, you're telling me to send this text. What if they reject me? Kevin, you're telling me to swallow my pride. What if they become more prideful? Kevin, you're telling me to move to this place. What if God doesn't provide? Kevin, Kevin you're telling me to, to, to go share the gospel with this person. Well, what if it doesn't work out the way that I think that it should? I don't want to discredit fear. Like fear is a very, very real and raw emotion. But the truth is, you need to know this, that as you go through this life, as you make your way to your promised land, and some of us have dozens of promised lands that we want to enter, a land flowing with milk and honey, and a land of peace and safety, you need to know that God is always with you, and God's fighting for you. So God calls Joshua. He says, Joshua, you're now going to lead Israel into the promised land. And Joshua is leading Israel towards the promised land. After God told Joshua this, the very next scene for Joshua is this. Joshua, there's a river called the Jordan River right in front of you. How are you going to cross it? And God just tells Joshua, hey, get into the water. And Joshua and Israel are probably thinking, God, what are we doing here? We're going in, we're going to go swimming. Is that what we're going to do? And God parts the waters and they walk on dry ground. The very next scene is, is them battling Jericho. And God knocks the walls down in Jericho and they don't have to fight. God's like, well, just trust me. Would you just trust me? I need you to just keep stepping, Joshua. Israel, I just need you to keep stepping. You just keep walking. You keep, you, you, you keep going forward. I'm going to take care of this. Even one point, like Joshua had these battle after battle after battle. Like God held the sun in the sky. He stood, stood still. Even at one point, God made it rain down, rain down hell from heaven to defeat the enemies. The, the truth is like, man, God is with you as you fight through this fear. And God is fighting for you behind the fear because it's equally, if not more, as the enemy knows that fear is trying to stop you to entering the promised land, God knows that if you can overcome this fear that you're carrying in your life, you can enter your promised land. Whatever that promised land is, man, if, if it's healing in your marriage, if that's your promised land, that's great. If it's healing in your relationship with your kids, if it's that conversation you need to have with your boss so you can get that promotion, if it's a move that you know that you need to make, if it's reconciliation within a friendship or within a family member, man, that could be your promised land. And God knows, man, if you can just overcome your fear, I can get you there. And I'm going to fight for you behind the scenes. And I'm going to do the things that, that need to be done. What would happen if you quit living in fear? The truth is, is Joshua led God's people into the promised land. And it was everything they hoped it would be. Because God never breaks a promise. God never breaks a promise. And they entered into the promised land. And it was amazing. And it was beautiful. And it was everything they hoped it would be. And God wants the same for you. What's that one thing that you need to do? Get past your fear. God's already fighting on the other end of this. Make it happen. Do it. And so I wanted to close with this today because if we overcome our fears, we can enter the promised land. Let me give you some practical ways to overcome your fears that, 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 so you can enter into the promised land that God has for you. The first practical thing that we need to do is this, is always do what God says. 
I tell my kids, listen, I know what's best for you. Do what I says. And God tells us, even in the book of Joshua, he says, be careful. He tells Joshua this, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. He's saying, Joshua, j- just, just do what I say. If you do what I say, I'm gonna take care of you. So if God tells you to go left, you go left. If God tells you to go right, you go right. If God tells you to go straight on that one lane road in the middle of Iowa that you keep on driving, even though there's maybe a Sasquatch in the woods or a bobcat in the woods, that you just keep on driving. You do whatever God tells you to do because if God calls you to it, God's gonna bring you through it. If God calls you to it, see, that's why Moses never saw the promised land. Because God said, Moses, listen, I need you to do this, this, and this. And Moses and God's people didn't do what God called them to do. And they never got to to enter the promised land. They saw it from a distance, but they never got to enter it. So make sure that you always do what God calls you to do. And and I don't want to discredit this one either, that it's not easy to do what God says. I'm, I'm working my way through the gospel of Mark right now. And he said, Jesus basically says, listen, following me is not going to be easy. If you think it's going to be easy, then you're in, the, you're in the wrong profession. The second thing that we can do to overcome our fear is this. Uh, take the first steps now. Don't, don't put it off any longer. Listen, you've procrastinated this long enough. Make that phone call. Swallow your pride. Set up that meeting. Have, be honest and have that conversation. Offer forgiveness like Jesus calls us to do. Write that letter. Go to that place, have that, have that meeting that you know that you need to have. Don't, don't put it off any longer. The key is like Joshua did, just step. Yeah, Joshua, there's a river in front of you. Just step, just keep going. Yeah, Joshua, there's Jericho, just step. Yeah, Joshua, there's this army marching against you. Just step, don't put it off any longer. Oh, just, just do it today. Like as soon as this message is done, nothing would bless me more than instead of texting me saying, Pastor Kevin, or emailing me saying, Pastor Kevin, that was a great message. Why don't you just put into action this? Just do, you know in your heart that thing that, that you need to do. And the third way to, to overcome fear is this. Know that God has prepared you for this moment to overcome your fear. Joshua was Moses' right-hand man for a really, really long time, for dozens and dozens of years. And when God told Joshua, be strong and be courageous, like he, Joshua was ready. This one thing that you've been putting off, God, God has been calling you to it, but he's also been preparing you for it. I believe that. You're prepared. He's prepared you for this. Rest in that. Know, know the confidence of that. You know, God, God still speaks to his people. I believe that. I don't believe God is silent today. God spoke to Joshua. Be strong and courageous. I'm gonna take you into the promised land. I think if we could hear God's voice today, even through this, this service, we would hear God say, he would say, hey, Kevin, I'm gonna take you into the promised land and I'm gonna fight for you and I'm gonna be with you. Don't worry, don't stress, don't fret. Let's go, overcome your fear. God still speaks. And I think he's telling us today, specifically, maybe the most specific sermon I've ever preached in my life. What's that letter that you need to write? God wants to take you into the promised land and maybe it's healing in that relationship. What's that text that you need to send? God wants to take you into the promised land. If you can just overcome your fear of what they might think. I have a friend that, that doesn't know the Lord. And I remember uh, telling my wife, I said, Jennifer, I've, I've got to talk to this friend. I care about her and I want to see her at the feast at the end that Revelation talks about. I want her to sit next to me at this feast and I want to celebrate with her and, and, and celebrate the salvation of God. But she doesn't know the Lord and I was scared of talking about Jesus with her. I was scared. What's she going to say? She's going to reject me. She's not going to like me anymore. The truth is that I had to overcome that fear in order to talk to her and God led me in to my promised land in that situation. And so whatever it is that God's calling you to do, do it. Just do it. God's looking for courageous people. Don't live courageously through other people. Don't just live courageously, even though they're biblical uh, heroes of the faith. You live courageously yourself. Send that text, write that letter, have that conversation, go to that place, make that transition that God is calling you to have. God's already fighting for you on the other end. I, I need you to know that. Right past your fear could be your promised land. And your promised land could be the greatest season of your life until you get to go be with Jesus in heaven. So overcome your fear. God bless you. 
Thank you for watching. Let me pray for us. Father, I thank you for everybody watching today. I pray your blessing over every person watching. I pray, Father, that you would give them courage to overcome their fear, that you give them courage to overcome anything that the enemy puts in their way, and that you would lead them right into the promised land, Father. But go with us and fight for us. Continue to fight for us. And I pray for maybe one, two, three, four, five, how many people that are watching today, that they would just say, okay, I'm going to take that step today and enter the promised land that you have for us. That first step, and then that second step. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I did want to make you aware of something, a uh, little bit of church business here in our online services, that a week from this Sunday, a, a week from now, we are going to be having um, our elections, and we're voting on three things in our elections that are coming up. The first thing we're voting on is the officers um, that will hold board positions and trustees and different things like that. The second thing we're going to vote on is our budget for next year. Uh, we are a Wesleyan church, and so we are, our people have the voice, and so um, we're going to be approving the budget, hopefully approving the budget. And the third thing we're voting on is the sale of our Walkertown property. And so you're going to hear more information um, about this, or maybe you've already gotten more information on this, but we have to publicly, we wanted to publicly announce it that the election is coming up. So God bless you. Um, know that that's coming up uh, a week from today. Hope you have an awesome week and know that man right past your fear could be your promised land. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Pastor Kevin for an amazing message. Um, for our giving, we love that God's people have been so faithful and so generous in their giving. It enables us to continue to do the great outreach that God has given this church to do. Uh, the different ways to give is you can mail it into the church office. There's a drop box to the left of the church office and that is check daily. You can do online at shadygrove.net and you click on give. You can also use our text to give option. Thank you so much for joining us and we can't wait to see you next time.